Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Atari A to Z Flashback, a series of explorations of the 150 games that make up Atari Flashback classics for Nintendo Switch. Today's game is Slot Machine, which was a 1978 release from Atari, developed by David Crane. Yes, that David Crane, who would go on to bring us the legendary Pitfall a few years later. Interestingly, as a slot machine simulation, this game is set up as a quasi-competitive affair, where two players, uh, one of whom can be computer controlled, compete to place bets and attempt to survive longer than the other. There's several different virtual slot machines you can play, but the game remains regarded as one of the least exciting games on the Atari 2600, so fun times await us. Let's go play Slot Machine. Okay, here we are once again with Atari Flashback Classics, today taking a look at Slot Machine. Not expecting this to be a super riveting uh, game or anything like that, but you know, it has historical meaning as a, an early game by David Crane, um, and indeed as one of the early Atari 2600 titles as well. And slot machine games were kind of a thing for a little while. They kind of lasted up until about the 16-bit era or so, and then they pretty much fell out of favour. Um, obviously, you can still play virtual slot machines today, but they tend to have actual gambling attached to them. Uh, by being played on the internet. Whereas at this point, these these were just straight simulations of slot machines. You didn't really win anything. There was no real reason to play them beyond sort of just playing them for the fun of it, really. Which is why I think this version incorporated the competitive two-player element, just to make it a little bit more interesting than it would otherwise have been. Okay, as always, let's take a look at the manual first. So here we are, slot machine game instructions. Win! All right, use your joystick controllers, blah, 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 blah. To press the console's game select switch to choose the particular slot machine you wish to play. Each machine play fields features a specific number of players and pay lines. The game number appears in the upper left corner of each machine play field. The first number in the upper right corner refers to the number of players. The second number refers to the number of pay lines. To press the game reset switch to start playing. The numbers in the upper right and left corners change to 25. In games two, four, six, and eight, which are two player games, no, sorry. The numbers in the upper right and left corners change to 25 in games 2, 4, 6 and 8, which are two-player games. This is the number of coins each player receives in their bank to begin betting. In 1, 3, 5 and 7, which are one-player games, the number in the upper left corner changes to 24. This occurs because the computer has made its initial bet and subtracted one coin from the original 25-coin bank. The numbers in each lower corner of the machine playfield show how much is being bet by each player. A question mark appears in each player's betting square. The difficulty switches have no effect. Use the red button to place your bet. You can bet up to five coins each time. Games three, four, seven, and eight have a maximum of five pay lines. Each bet of one coin increases the chance of adding to your bank. For example, bet three coins and you may win a jackpot on either the first, second, or third pay lines. So one is the standard one in the middle, two is the top one, three is the bottom one, four is uh, top left to bottom right, and five is top right to bottom left. Games 1, 2, 5, and 6 only pay on the center line. In these games, the more you bet, the more you can add to your bank. After placing your bet, pull back on your joystick to spin the reels of the slot machine. That's about it. In one-player games, you're competing against the computer. The computer makes a random bet for each play. The game ends if you or the computer go broke. And that is about it, really. Yeah, there you go. So, let's play slot machine. All right, so we begin with game one, which is one player, center pay line, jackpot. So you can only um, win if you get a jackpot combination on the center line. So in theory, it's quite difficult to win in this mode. So game reset. So the computer's already made their bet of one. Uh, I will bet, let's bet five. Let's live dangerously and pull back on the joystick to pull the handle like pulling a handle on a one-armed bandit nothing for me it's bet one this time nothing for me let's go three again nothing for me I wonder if there's any kind of programming in this that sort of guarantees you a win after a little while, or if it's purely random. 
Because if it's purely random, this game mode is very unlikely to see you win. <laughs> We are going to beat the computer, though. Just about. I keep betting ones. Yeah, computer is out of money. All right. Um, next game, I guess. Two-player centre pay line jackpot. So that's the same, but you play with two players instead of against the computer. Uh, one player up to five pay lines jackpot so again you've got to get a jackpot combination of symbols in this one but you can use up to the five pay lines that there were in the manual so okay uh let's pay for all five then so nothing there for us again let's pay for all five again nope it's not going great for us <laughs> oh i actually won something so i got those three bars across the bottom there uh, and that's taking me back up to 25 coins which is nice nope nothing there oh we both won something um Presumably from that top line, I guess. I don't know. Uh, anyway, continue. That's for three bars down at the bottom. Now, I suspect you can probably already... figure out why this is not one of the most beloved Atari 2600 games because it's quite dull <laughs> I mean it does what it says it's going to do which is to provide a simulation of a slot machine and it actually does that quite competently to be fair I mean, those reels are scrolling and spinning quite convincingly. It's just the the graphics are quite uninteresting. The colour scheme is horrible. And this this there's just nothing nothing to do really. I mean, it might have been a bit more interesting if it incorporated some, like, holes and nudges and that sort of thing, but no, it's it's literally just a straight one-armed bandit. You put in as many coins as you want win lines and hope for the best. And that's it. That is all there is to that game. Uh, two player up to five pay lines jackpot. One player centre pay line payoff. Uh, so this one, uh, there are more varied combinations of things that you can get uh, that are more likely to... I don't know if they're more likely to make you win, but there's there's more possible ways to win in this mode. So this one is just on the centre line. So again, you bet um, a certain amount that you're going to win on that centre line. Let's have a go. Let's bet five to begin with. Nothing there. Nope. Nope. And nope. And indeed, nope. Two player centre pay line payoff, and one player up to five pay lines payoff. In theory, this is the one where you're most likely to win something. Uh, so let's let's play this one, I guess. Nope. 
<laughs> nope. Oh, I want something. Uh, from what? Two chairs, maybe? Hard to say. It doesn't actually tell you which line you won on either. Which is uh, troublesome. Nope. Nope. I want something. From what? I have no idea. And again, no idea. Let's go have a quick look at the manual, just check the uh, winning combinations for that payoff mode. All right, so payoff mode, uh, you win two for one cactus, five for two cactuses, cacti, sorry, 10 for two chairs and a three thing, or 10 for three sets of chair and tables. Okay, so having a, having a bar as your last one, that's like a wild card. Uh, and the best is the cars. All right, let's have one more go at that last mode. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm really struggling to think of anything else to say about this game, but... I might as well give it one more go. All right, all five pay lines. Off we go. There's our ten for getting the two cactus and the and the uh, wild card. That will be for one cactus, presumably. Okay, one cactus and one uh, table of chairs. I think. Yes. Don't know. <laughs> I say just a, just a bit of feedback would be nice, just to tell you exactly where your winnings are coming from. Because otherwise, just, there's no real sort of sensation of you really achieving anything. Which is already limited given the severe lack of agency you have in this game. Oh, I won two. Brilliant. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh dear. Well, um, I mean, that is everything. That is everything this game has to offer. I mean... You can look at this in a few different ways. One, you can look at it as a game. In which case, it's not very good. It wouldn't have been very good back in the day either. Because it's very, very, very limited. Um, even for the period. There's just there's just nothing to do here. And like even as a two-player game, all you're doing is just leaving things up to random chance. And it's like, which one of the two of us is luckiest? <laughs> There's not really any strategy there at all. Um, on the other hand, uh, when you consider what David Crane was known for, which was sort of technical proficiency with the Atari 2600, you can look at this as sort of him proving a few things. Like he's in this, he's got he's got lots of objects moving around the screen. He's got objects going behind things. Uh, he's got smooth scrolling going on those reels. He's got sort of things uh, moving and scrolling different parts of the screen independently of each other. So from a technical perspective, at the time, this would have been quite impressive. 
it's just there's there's no game there there's just nothing to back up that technical proficiency with any sort of interest or reason to play it really it's it's just yeah there's, there's just nothing to enjoy there um so i mean i i appreciate the inclusion of this in this compilation because i mean it's it's important to look back on every aspect of the history of a medium because you can learn a lot from the things that didn't work as much as the things that did work as well and i think this was an early example of people at atari sort of thinking right what can we turn into a video game and in some cases it worked in some cases adapting real world things into video games for the atari 2600 worked take the board game adaptation for example the version of backgammon there's the versions of checkers and chess that we yet to come to on this series they both work well quite well <laughs> thinking time for the computer aside but then you've got this which is sort of designed based on the same principle here's a thing that exists in reality what if we made a simulation of that on the on the atari 2600 on the atari vcs as it was known then uh, and in this case the result is not a lot of fun i mean i'm not a particular gambler or anything anyway so it it may be that someone in 1978 who enjoyed going to vegas or going to the casino or whatever and playing the one-armed bandits which to be fair are no more complex than this they might get something out of this they might enjoy the experience of being able to do that on their television but certainly looking back on this from a, a modern perspective this just doesn't really work at all <laughs> so i'm glad we gave it a go but it's uh, it's not one i'm going to be returning to in a hurry and certainly not one i'm going to be trying to convince people to play the two-player mode with at any point but anyway that was slot machine for atari 2600 as always thank you very much for watching and i'll see you again next time <laughs>